Let's pretend it's Monday morning. Your alarm goes off and you want to wake up to a productive day. Not that one. This one. Yes, this is a safe way to make sure that you don't start your day with your phone. Now it's time to get up. Actually, there's not even a chance that you'll get messed up because your charging station is away from the bed. In fact, it's not even in the bedroom because there are no screens in the bedroom. You head on to the bathroom to clean your face and do business, but only your business. Today, the bathroom is not for reading the news, social media or anything at all that could take precious focus away from your morning and keep you from starting your day. Now is a good time to decide on your screen hours for the day that are best suited to your lifestyle. If you work in the morning, leave the morning for work. Otherwise, it might be good to use your morning time as screen time. To preserve your focus, keep your screen hours from getting scattered throughout your schedule. But it's still best to leave out your phone from the first and last hours of the day so you can stay focused on your daily plans and preparation as well as time for yourself before bed. Now it's time to get to your project. One thing that you should take with you is a distraction journal. In case you have anything that pops up in your mind that you would like to Google, check, like, answer, retweet, regram, you can write that down in the journal and when your screen time has come, you can go ahead and do that. Then you can focus on the task at hand. It's best to keep your desktop clear of any distracting icons, website, bookmarks, or anything that can tempt you away from doing your desired task. Remember that this is your battle for attention, so it's good to physically keep other devices off of your desk. To motivate yourself for longer, you can try tracking your productive time. As you train your concentration muscles, you will achieve longer and better focus. There are different apps and programs to do this, as well as tracking your time on paper. Whenever you complete a task, you should close your associated browser tabs and programs and delete any files that you don't need so you can move on with a clean slate. This also goes for working from your phone or elsewhere. You don't want to sit down to do something, only to find that you are in the middle of shopping for couches. It's finally time for your lunch break. It's best if you avoid using your phone while you eat so you can really focus on the food and clearing your mind. But if you need a different kind of pause, it might be good to go outside, work out, meditate, walk or read. It's best to be prepared with ideas for healthy distractions and break activities for when you eventually need them in advance. If you think people might worry that you're ignoring them, you should share your digital minimalism experiment with them ahead of time. Once you've had your break, it's time to go back to work. In the afternoon, your eyes might be getting a little bit tired, so it's a good idea to use dark mode, not only on the computer, but also on your phone. Some websites and programs offer this feature out of the box, but there are also browser extensions you can use. I use the dark mode extension on Google Chrome. So you're on YouTube and you're actually looking for some inspiration for your current project. You can help yourself to be less distracted by installing a couple of useful browser extensions on the Chrome browser. Distraction-free YouTube will hide the home page and suggested videos so that you can focus on what you are wanting to watch and looking for. The Facebook Newsfeed Eradicator will let you go on Facebook but will hide the feed that could distract you from the original reason you went there. There are also applications that you can use to block yourself from accessing any websites that you would like to avoid while you're working. This way you can choose them yourself and not stick to any pre-made ones. If at any point you want to go on social media, it's best to use your laptop or desktop as they are not always going to be in your pocket. Once you're done with work for a day, it might be good to spend some time in nature. This will relax your eyes and clean your mind. See if you can walk in silence. Leave your phone in your pocket to use for emergencies and try to train yourself to be in the moment without impulsive pleasure-seeking thoughts. Maybe you can meet up some friends in real life talk more freely, receive their genuine reactions and have a deeper sense of connection. You should keep your phone tucked away so that you can enjoy this precious one-on-one -on -one time and also, it's kind of rude. If you're having a good time or you see something beautiful, you might want to take a picture. If you have the opportunity, take the picture with an actual camera. It's worth a shot. 
It feels like time has flown by. It must be because you've turned off your notifications. You don't want to get distracted all the time. If it's important, you have your call notifications still turned on. But it's probably time to get home. No need to check your phone though, because you're carrying a watch. Back at home, you make yourself something for dinner and eat it on the table to distance yourself from the computer and TV time. After dinner, you decide to check your phone. A good idea is to focus on one screen at a time so you keep your attention undivided. A good way to relieve yourself from the bright and tempting colors of applications and social media is to try and turn on black and white mode on your phone. Now all of these colors are not so in your face and a little bit less distracting. You should set aside time for calling or texting friends ahead of time so you don't interrupt your work multiple times throughout the day and they also know when to expect your answer. Since it's getting late, you should try and use the blue light filter on your phone or laptop as it keeps you from straining your eyes in the evening and protects your good night's sleep. If you're not too busy chatting, you can take a second to clear up your phone screen and put your apps away into folders. That way, it will take you just a little bit more willpower to go and open them. In the evening, you want to shift your focus on your well-being and confidence, so you can delete social media and stop reading the news for some time. Instead, it's a good idea to download a meditation app and see if you can spend 10 minutes listening to your mind and body. This will build up your focus. This time is just for you. And with that, you can go to sleep, but leave your phone away. Or say that you have a free day today. You might have a few emails and messages to answer, but once you're done with your digital chores, it's time to focus on analog entertainment. It's good to seek out offline activities that will train your focus. For example, reading. If you sit down to read, don't take your phone with you. In fact, it's best to leave your devices in a designated place and stop walking around with them. It's good to have a little bit of time reading and be in the moment. No music, no audiobook, just you and the book. You can use this opportunity to have some quiet time. And if at any point you begin to miss your phone and the internet, you can have a look at your recent usage statistics. Knowing where you're at will give you much better control over your consumption. If you don't feel like that's enough, you might need to fall back on some to-dos and plans that you have written beforehand so you don't feel lost and bored. Oftentimes, digital entertainment takes up the spaces in our day when we're not sure what we want to do next. In any case, there are also apps that will count your offline time in which you don't check your phone and your computer. For example, you can plant a forest by not touching your phone. And that's awesome. Okay, so it's already been a couple of hours and I guess you can watch some videos again or maybe you can talk to a friend. Get yourself set up and use a timer, alarm, calendar or application to track your time. Once you're done, you should put your devices away. This is a good time to do some physical activities. Physical activities can give you the dopamine surge that technology gives you in a much more healthy way. And also you will feel proud of yourself and energized. You can do this in nature or you can prepare a YouTube workout using your distraction-free YouTube browser extension. It's important to train your concentration for temptations. Finally, it's a good idea to document how you feel. If you've tried a few of these rules for a couple of days and you want to see how it worked for you and have an objective reference, it's good to keep a journal. Write down any changes that you may have noticed and, of course, it's best to start with day one. That way you'll know which rules did good for you and how you want to move on with your digital minimalism journey going forward. And that makes 50. In conclusion, thank you for watching this video and let me be the first to say that it is nearly impossible to keep up with all of these rules. However, if you would like to do a complete digital detox, this is a good place to start. And otherwise, if you would just like to minimize your usage, you can try a few different rules and see what works best for you. Finally, if you like this video, remember to leave a like and subscribe to my channel and you are welcome to have a look at some of my other content. See you soon!